Hey everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 23 of this series, Learning C++ by Making Games. In this video, we'll get our word from a word list. We will turn that word into a mystery word by replacing each letter with an asterisk. This video and the series have been brought to you by my Patreon sponsors like Nemi and Games. That said, fire up your project and let's get started. Welcome back to your IDE, everybody. And in today's episode, we're going to take care of reading in and declaring which of our words we're going to use. So we're going to take care of this step three here. The first thing we need to do is we need to download a word list. Now, I've already compiled one for you guys. You can find it in the description of this video or a link to a text file you can download. And we need to bring that to the correct folder. So here I have my project folder. And inside of it, you can see I have my solution file, my .sln file. My word list needs to be in this file. So here's a copy of that word list. So these are the 100 words that we can be pulling from. And we need to bring this list into here. So what I have to do is either copy and paste a file in, like I'm going to do, or drag it in from your downloads folder. But now that it's here, we're able to connect to this file more easily. All right. So let's get started with the actual coding portion of this video. So like always, I'm gonna take my pseudocode and I'm just gonna copy it. Don't think I have any changes to make to it. Also, I'm going to fix that from the last video. All right, so let's go down here and we're on step three. And again, I'm gonna comment this out with control KC. And just like before, sorry, I had to check if I did caps or not. Get random word. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to set a random seed. And to do so, we're gonna need the appropriate headers. Well, the two headers we need for this are our S or our C library, sorry, our C time and our C standard library. So let's do our include C time and our include C standard library. All right, so now that we have that done, we've taken care of the appropriate headers, we need to set our random seed. And you should already be able to do this on your own. You should have done this in our last section and in one of the challenges I gave you a couple of videos back. So srand time null. You can use a different seed if you want, but remember, if the seed doesn't change, it's gonna be a very predictable game because every time you play it, the first word you're gonna get is gonna be the same. So this will create the random, create a random seed used to get a random word from the word list array. All right, so we're taking care of that. Oh, I did say we have something we'll expand later on. Well, we will just do a, let's quickly expand that before we do this. So, should have read that more carefully. Sorry about that. So based on our last lesson we had that wasn't code based, what we need to do to get this to work is we need to read data in. So the way that works is we will set a variable for streaming in words. This will be called random words. We will open text file of words and stream it into random word. Everything else remains the same. So let me just take this bit. Oh, and we also need the appropriate headers. So appropriate headers. And I'm gonna copy this real quick. And let's take care of our appropriate headers. So the header that we need is our F stream. So we're gonna do include F stream. There we go. And let's go down here. And I'm just going to paste that into there and tab that over. All right, so we need to set a variable for streaming words in. Well, that's gonna be our STD F stream. Sorry, not F stream, IF stream, because we're streaming information in. So remember in, I, in, O, out, that's at least how I remember it. So we wanna stream this information in and we're gonna stream it into a variable called random word. This file stream reads into the variable. And we need to then take random word and we need to 
open words.txt. And if you're not sure where that, where that name comes from, all you have to do is go back to your file. And the file name here is words with a capital W and an S at the end, and it's a text file. So this reads the file, which is our list of words. All right, so we've done that. Now we have a array of, or a list of words. We want to add this to our random word list. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to do a for loop. So for int i equals zero, again, we are, this is only local to our loop. We are going to go through this up to 99 times and we are going to increment it each time. So we're gonna go through this when i is less than or equal to 99. So all the indices in our list here and we're gonna increment each time we go through this by one. We are going to fill our word list with our random word. So what we have in this file. So this file we're now connected to. So this is a variable saying, hey, we want to connect to something. This is what we're connecting to. What we've connected to, we want to read into this. So just because we're connected to it doesn't mean we actually have you know, usable access to the information yet. We need to store this information in here to use it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our random word and we are going to use our extraction operator to extract a word, the words from there into our word list. And we're gonna store them at indice i, which will go up every time we go through this loop. So I'll start at the first indice, which is zero then go to the second indice, which is one, and then the hundredth indice at the very end, which will be 99. So this filling, this is filling the array with words from the list. Now let's test this and actually make sure we're filling our list. And we're gonna pause here real quick just to see it work. So we're gonna do an std c out, and we want to c out. So we're using our insertion operator to read out the information or stream the information out from the system to the viewport or screen word list at that indice. And we're gonna want to do a, actually no, we're gonna wanna do an STD end line, otherwise all the words will show up on one line for testing purposes only. So let's test this out, make sure everything works correctly. All right, we have to enter any key to start. And okay, well that is slightly problematic. I would like to say that that error was intentional, but it wasn't. And in fact, it was something I warned you about. And had I been going a bit more slowly, I would have seen the problem right away. In fact, the problem occurred when we started. Well, the problem is fairly simple. If you remember in the last video, I said if you have problems connecting, make sure the name is right and things like that. The first thing in that list was make sure you're in the right directory. Yeah, we wanna be in here. Not in here. We don't want to be in the solution file. We want to be with a class file, the CPP file. So now this will work. And there you can see the words that it's streamed in. Okay, so now that we've got that working, much to my embarrassment, we will move forward. And I'm glad you actually saw why it might not be considered best practice, but we also don't want the person to cheat and be able to read the words in themselves. So what we need to do now is we need to set a random word. So we're gonna go here and all we're gonna do is get a random integer. And this integer is going to, so we did the loop for 100 iterations and we got random words and added to the list. This integer, this part here, is going to be used to find the element in our word list. So int randnum is equal to rand function modular 100. So this returns a random number, zero to 99. We are then going to make sure that I put the semicolon in and not have any more embarrassing mistakes in this video. We are then going to do word. So our variable from our last video, there is that, there it is, word. We are going to initialize this finally and we're going to initialize it as word list. So we're getting a word from our list of 100 words and we are getting it at index. We're getting the element at index random num. And again, that random num we've just set up there. So we've only used it once. And this initializes, I just put init's word by getting a random element 
from the array word list. So now that we've done that, well, let's make another test. Let's see what that word is. Also, let's make sure I put that semicolon in. I can't believe I'm skipping that. So we're going to do an STD. We're going to stream out and we're going to use our insertion operator and we're inserting it into the out stream is a variable and the variable we want to insert is our word. And then we're going to do an STD end line. And this is for testing or cheating purposes. So let's just make sure that works real quick. We'll see our stream of words go by. So it's going to be a bit confusing probably. Uh, it looks like bag is going to be our word. But let's just make sure we're gonna do that one more time. We're just gonna comment this out so we can tell what's what. Of course, we could have put a second line end line in. Hit F. And glossy was our word that time. Let's just make sure we keep getting random words. Tremendous. Okay, so our word list is working. We're gonna leave this active for a bit. We'll get rid of it later on. We then need to make our word a mystery word. So declare our mystery word and set it to length of word and use the and set the value to each as an asterisk. So we've gotten that done and we're on to our last step. I did kind of skip something in the pseudocode. We need to do something in terms of good form. And I probably should put this in the last or two videos ago and I might have skipped it. But what we need to do is we need to stop streaming information from our word list. This is still running. So we need to stop that from running. We need to use an operator that I haven't mentioned before, which is our random word. So that's our variable and we need to close this. Now that we have our random word, we want to close it. So we had it open. We are reading information from here. We read the information in and as we were reading it in, we were sending it over to our word list. Now that we know we have a working random word, we can close this. In fact, this could be right after that loop, by the way. So we're just going to do a comment here though for this one. Make word a mystery. So we're going to declare a new string, so SED, standard library string, called mystery word. And what we are going to do, just like we've done before with other containers, is we are going to get the length of our word. So remember, strings are containers, so we're going to get the length of word and do and use that function. So now we know how long it is. And like I mentioned with strings, you can have a number here in parentheses and it will populate based on that number some other character. Well, that other character we're going to use is our asterisk. You cannot do this with the curly brackets. That's why I had that note in our string video. So what this does is it creates a string that is as long as word is and makes it all asterisks. And it's again, for testing purposes, make sure it's the right length. So we're going to do SCDC out and we're going to do mystery word. It's not like we're going to be surprised by what we see. We should just see a whole bunch of stars. STD end line. And this is purely for testing purposes to see how long the word is. However, we will use this later. And when I say we will use this later, we actually will have this exact line somewhere else in the code. All right, so let's test this out real quick. So we're gonna just type in a random letter here and we have unwritten and you can see they are the same length. Let's try it again just to make sure that wasn't beginner's luck, right? All right, I think it was all right hit last time. We have nondescript. Again, we can see that they are the same length and let's get something hopefully short this time. Groovy. Okay, that's sufficiently short so I can count that on screen. So G R O O V Y. It is the correct length. We have what we are looking for. So we have completed that section of our code. So we have almost everything we need to have a functional game. The next bit we have is the actual game itself. And we only have one video to do that is not gonna be game coding before we finish this iteration, and that is covering switches. And I've mentioned switches before, but we'll talk about them a bit, and we're gonna then use that to code out the rest of our game. So that said, if you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed working on your second game, hit that like button down below. It really does help this channel out. And if you wanna be here when we talk about switches and finish the first iteration of the game out before moving on to some more advanced 
advanced stuff, then make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon. Also, consider becoming a Patreon supporter. It really does help this channel out. And finally, I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day. Thank you.